Good morning, church. Amen. That was nice and loud. Are you blessed? Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Can we all stand? Amen. And we're just going to invite the presence of God into this place. So let's just lift up our hands all over this place and bow our heads as we pray. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father and most gracious God, we come to you, Lord, in no other name but through your Son, Jesus. The name that is above every other name, Lord. For in that name, Lord, we know that there is power, Lord. In that name, we know there is healing. In that name, Lord, we know there is victory, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that even as each and every person has entered this room right now, Lord. Father, we thank you that you shall meet that need. We've come to praise and worship you and to encounter you, Lord. So, Lord, as you move in this place, you do what you need to do. We thank you for the man of God that's going to bring forth your word. Bless him as he comes up. Restore the anointing that has gone out of him, Father. We thank you that your word is going to fall on good ground. Now, Lord, bless the praise and worship, Lord. And, Father, we're just ready for an infilling from you, Lord. Bless the service. We put aside every distraction, Lord. We come against every spirit that is not of thine. And we let you know that you have preeminence over us. We ask this in your precious and never-failing name. And all God's people said, come on, give God praise in this place. Amen. It's a Sunday morning celebration service, and we're going to praise God like we mean it. You know why? Because we serve a God of a breakthrough. Hallelujah. He's able to be a breakthrough in our lives today, man. So we're going to give God praise all over this place. Are you ready? Come on, let's give God praise. Let's clap. Hey. defeated one my light and my salvation when the wicked my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my bread they stumble at me come on he's omnipotent say you are omnipotent omnipotent almighty defender my victory my refuge the one i run to you your hands up and say, shall break through in this place. Break through. You are the God of a breakthrough. When I can't see my way through. And I really don't know what to do. I look to you. Break through. The walls fall down when I shout through. Strongholds break when I break through. I'm going to praise you. You are the God. You are Defeated one, my life and myself. And when the wicked say, my enemies and my foes came up for me to eat of my flesh, they stumble at me. His presence is everywhere today, man. Say, say you are omnipotent, all my defender, my victory, my refuge, the one I run. situation in your life that's dead right now that makes him the god of a breakthrough amen he's able to be a breakthrough in your heart a breakthrough in your mind a breakthrough in your spirit but all you got to do is declare it like the songwriter says amen so are you ready you're gonna help me sing it today come on shout say breakthrough in my heart 
heart, break the wind my mind, break the wind my spirit, break the wind my soul, break the wind my weakness, break the wind my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the break the wind my worship, break the wind my praise, break the wind I live and glorify your name, break the wind I dance, break the wind I shout. situation that you think has you tied down hallelujah because that's what he is amen he's the god of a breakthrough lift up the name of jesus one more time church and you may be seated at this time but we're just going to go through a few announcements but before we do that we want to know is there anyone visiting us for the very first time we are not going to ask you to do anything or say anything we just want to acknowledge your visit so if you could kindly stand if you're visiting us for the very first time Amen. There's no one. Well, church, give yourselves a round of applause for your faithfulness. Amen. Let's focus our attentions on the screens for the announcements. You are quite familiar with them. But if you have missed an announcement or if you would like to clarify or confirm on anything, you're most welcome to go to the information desk. Amen. We have a few prayer requests for today. Sister Prissy is unwell. Sister Amelia's newborn baby is experiencing breathing complications, and Rhea is not well. So we're just going to remember them in prayer because we know we serve a God who, has, who is the healer divine. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, next week, church, is Father's Day. And moms, you had a day where you were blessed and you were pampered and spo spoiled. Well, dads, next week, it's your turn. And if you want to bring a love offering so we could bless the father of this house, you are most welcome to do so, church. So tell your neighbor, say, it's a good time to give. And you know why it's a good time to give? Because the word of God says that when we give, God gives back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Hallelujah. So let's stand today, church, and we're going to give to God. Let's hold that seed as we begin to pray, amen. And I'm going to call Sister Mala Ramdani, and she's going to pray for the offering right now. And 
Let's pray. Let's just lift up our hands as we give to the church because worship is giving and giving is worship. Let's worship God together. Oh, we worship you. It's your breath, Lord. Oh. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your bread and our Oh, my God. 
situation in my life right now. Every dry situation in my life right now. Lord, if your word says it, Lord, then it shall be done. So breathe upon us, Lord. Breathe upon us, Lord. begin to worship God. As you sing it one more time, it's your bread. It's your bread in our lives. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your bread. Pour out your praise to God today. Lift up your hands all over this place and begin to give God praise in this place. Come on, church, lift it up and give Him praise in this place. Amen. Lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's His breath in our lungs today. Hallelujah. No matter what may be going around right now, no matter if the if the third wave is upon us. Coronavirus may affect our lungs, may affect the breathing, but God's word says that He breathes life into us. Amen. Give God praise in this place. Amen. And I want you to put your hands together today and let's welcome Reverend Al E. Joseph. Come on, church. Thank you, Jericho. Good morning, church. Good morning, people of a living God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody beat those masks and be heard? Somebody shout glory. glory. Somebody shout the name of Jesus. Who saved you? Some people are not shouting it enough. Especially for those that are online watching with us right now. Wherever you are, don't be embarrassed. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. Shout out the name of Jesus. Who saved you? Who delivered you? Who set you free? Who is the king of kings? Who is your Lord of Lords? <laughs> Mighty to save and strong to deliver. His name is? What's his name? Oh man, we get excited. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. At the sound of his name, we know that we'll have victory. Glory. Well, give somebody your high air five this morning. Tell them they're looking smart. Tell them they're looking good. Oh, yeah, you can take a step a little left and right just to say it loud to them. Don't sit yet. Tell somebody you're looking good even with that mask on. <laughs> oh, tell them they're still looking beautiful. Husbands and wives, you should be close by to each other. Tell them you're still smashing. You're still looking beautiful. You're still looking handsome. Why are you looking at me? You're supposed to be looking at the people next to you, the person next to you. You're watching online. Take the time out to tell your wife, your husband, somebody around you. Tell them how good they're looking. Tell them how good they make you feel. Are we at a point where everybody is so, so spiritual, where we have no earthly use? 
Oh, yes, we need to spread some good feelings. Amen? Hallelujah. Some of you will catch up later. You're still too shy. It's the morning. But you may be seated this morning, church. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Oh, well, it's so good to be found in the house of the Lord. Uh, it's so good to be with uh, you this morning. For those of you that are watching online as well, we equally welcome you this morning to our Sunday morning celebration service, whatever is on your agenda right now. Put it all aside, stay focused on the Word, stay focused on being in touch with us this morning. Put all distractions, be like you are at church. Clear everything, get everybody around with you, and let's have church together. Even though you can't be with us now, but in spirit we're together, so let's make these moments count. Amen? Well, we know that the third wave is on us and the numbers are spiraling out of control. But like the Bible tells us, we shouldn't have a spirit of fear, but of faith and with a sound mind. That's important. So it means that we've got to make good decisions, educated decisions. And obviously, our fears put aside, meaning that our faith must be in God. Hallelujah. So we got to do that. Do what's necessary. Stay safe. Make good educated decisions. And I know that God is going to be your portion. And as we said it before, we're going to get through this. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to continue from where I stopped last week. And uh, I spoke about the vaccine. And I gave you a, a bit of a definition about it. And uh, one of the things that the Lord revealed to me at this time is just as we have that vaccine being injected into our lives, being filled with the Holy Spirit, is the same. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is that training factor that we know and we understand, which brings me to the title of my message this morning, which is entitled Training Day. I want to talk to you about your training day, and being a child of God, obviously, it's not just one day, but it's every day with the Holy Spirit, which is our training day. So, the spiritual understanding that I have for this message comes from the simple definition as we are all trusting and believing in God for the vaccine that's supposed to be successful with no long-term side effects and it's working well. But when we understand in definition what the vaccine is, it gives us a greater understanding as to what to expect. And more importantly, spiritually, what we should uh, have revealed to ourselves. So let me take you through the simple definition, not just a medical one, but a lay simple understanding so we all can be on the same page together. So this is what it is. A vaccine in simple definition is a type of medicine that trains the body's immune system so that it can fight off infection or disease. Okay, so that's what it is, a type of medicine that trains the body's immune system to fight off an infection or a disease. So, when I look at this and I begin to see what is God telling us at this time? What is our spiritual draw? There is so much of negative talk, obviously, about COVID-19, about the infection rate, and there's so much that we want to draw from the vaccine. We want to have the vaccine taken, frontline workers, people of importance, you know, people that are at the forefront, uh, at a higher risk, they need to have the vaccine first, then the rest of the population. And then we're also looking at how it's reacting differently now. It's going almost three months or so since the first vaccine. And we're looking at what's happening globally. People are doubting, should we take it? Shouldn't we take it? There's so many things that are going on. For me, I want to say, Lord, what is the spiritual revelation? What is it that I can draw from this time? And you know, throughout this period of been using the opportunity of this pandemic to bring spiritual insight and revelation so that it would help build our faith. And that's exactly what I want to do with you this morning, give you the spiritual understanding of what we need to draw from at this time. Because there's many things that we go through in life that we should not just focus on the event, but we should also turn our focus as to what God is saying, how we need to direct ourselves or redirect our actions or our thought patterns. And this is exactly what happens when it comes to a time like this where the vaccine is in high demand. We are now at the third wave. What is God saying to us? What is it that we need to attach ourselves and to hold on to? So what is our spiritual understanding and perspective of what's going on around the world right now? 
Now turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. And I'm reading from verse 48, the second portion of that scripture, and verse 49. Well, let's read this together. You are witnesses of these things. Say, the Bible is talking to me. I can't hear you. You got your masks on. Say, the Bible is talking to me. Oh, yes, we can personify the Bible all the time because the Word of God is living. Now, this is what it says to you. Jesus says, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. What does he say? Stay in the city until you are enclosed and throw with power from on high. May God bless the reading of his word. When I look at what Jesus had instructed the disciples to do at this point when he was taking his leave and he was ascending, it's obvious that we see that there is a major contrast in now who is going to lead the disciples who is going to direct them, and how are they going to make it without Jesus? It was a big question for the disciples, because you must remember, Jesus started off with over 70 disciples, he ended up with 11. So when we look at all of these things that have happened under the direction of Jesus, they come to a point, well, what do we do? Who do we turn to? How are we going to make it without you? Remember, Jesus has been their teacher has been their rabbi, has instructed them, has coached them, has trained them right through along that point. He's given them the qualification basically to understand what they are called to do. He's given them the instructions of what needs to be done going forward. Now that he's leaving, the disciples were obviously feeling at a loss because the teacher, the instructor is no longer going to be with them. But Jesus says, I'm going. I've given you the instructions. You know what needs to be done. But when I go, stay in the city. Don't do anything until you are clothed with the Holy Spirit. When I look at this understanding, I realize that Jesus was helping them in their transition from having them qualified, having them taught, and actually working out in the field. And it brings me to the realization that this is something that we all do even when it comes to our industry, when it comes to work. We need help, we need guidance, we need training, even though we are qualified, even though we are educated, even though we have our degree, even though we have the mental knowledge, but we need guidance, we need help, we need training. So when we're looking at the vaccine, what does the vaccine do? It's an injection into our body that helps train our immune system how to fight off infection and diseases. Here we see Jesus says to them, don't go without being clothed with power from on high. So Jesus says, I've been here with you, but now you need to be injected with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is now going to train you. I've been training you, but the Holy Spirit will now train you. The Holy Spirit will now guide you. The Holy Spirit will now protect you. Because I've been here in flesh, and Jesus could only be in one place at one time. Jesus was not omnipotent. He was not omniscient while he was on this earth. But when it comes to... Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. So it means that like Jesus could not be with the disciples all at one time, wherever they needed to be, and there was going to be a scattering because they all had their different plans and purposes. Now Jesus says, I wouldn't be able to do that, but I'm sending the Holy Spirit, which is what my Father promised, and the Holy Spirit will be with you to train you, to guide you. And when I 
I look at that and I think about the vaccine and I think about who we are and whose we are, I realize that yes, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Like I said in my previous message, earth is a type of heavenly colony where God wants us to run this earth like things are in heaven, but it also means that we have an immunity from things that are here on the earth. Just like somebody who travels from one country to another, they have a diplomatic immunity for things or activities that are in that country that will not apply to them because they are from a different country. Same with us. Because we have a heavenly mandate, because we are in Christ, because we are kingdom sons and daughters, there are decisions and authorities that don't have the final say over us. It's our heavenly father and creator that has the final say and because of that I realize that I have an immunity that's here on this earth but that immunity that I have like Jesus said to the disciples don't just go out yet this immunity this guidance this training for the immune system that you need spiritually to keep you protected it will come from the infilling of the Holy Spirit I'm excited about the infilling of the Holy Spirit I get excited about being filled with the Holy Spirit and about being led with the Holy Spirit because it reminds me of my immunity on this earth. It reminds me that man does not have the final say over me. It reminds me that doctors don't have the final say over me. It reminds me that accountants don't have the final say over you. It reminds you that your bank balance doesn't have the final say over you. That your age doesn't have the final say over you. Nothing on this earth has the the final say over you, but it's your heavenly Father and Creator that has the final word. It doesn't matter how people will down talk you or how people will put you down, but what is important is the Holy Spirit that helps you realize when man is not for you, God is for you, and He will raise you up, which is where you are today. You are at a point where no matter who and what tries to put you down, God is the one that will raise you up, and it's through His Holy Spirit. I don't know what the agenda is of the enemy against you, your plan, your purpose for what's happening or going on in your life right now. But what I do understand is like the world has the desire for this vaccine so that their immune system can be trained to fight off infection and disease, there is an immunity that I have spiritually that allows me to overcome the natural circumstances in this world. More important than any kind of medication. Yes, there's nothing wrong with taking medication. God had birthed the medical science in the Garden of Eden. We know it and understand it, but it all carries a limitation. I'm looking, going beyond the limitation of medicine, beyond the limitation of medical science, beyond the limitation of man, which is where God steps in. And the only way that we are able to have that kind of immunity is when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Sir, ma'am, it's not optional. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not optional for you. When you give your life and your heart to God, that is the first step. You're opening yourself up to be emptied of all things that are impure from your past, all negativity. You empty yourself out of all those things when you give your life and your heart to God. You empty yourself so that you can be filled, filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's important for you to have your spiritual man strengthened, which is your immunity from every attack on this earth. That's what's important. Here Jesus comes around and he introduces to his disciples, you're going to have your training day. Not with me, but with the Holy Spirit. I look at this and I realize that when it comes to industry, we have the same principle. And in most companies or industries, it's called a type of in-service training. People are qualified. You finish school, tertiary education, you got your degree. You know how to do things. Mentally, you are prepared. But you don't know how to react in the field. You don't know how to react in the company, how the company works, how the protocols work, 
You don't understand the area. You don't understand the geography about your company, what's happening, what's going on. So what happens is they assign somebody to you personally and you have in-service training. You have a kind of a personal trainer that helps you. When you look at, for an example, uh, maybe the police force and uh, other forces like authority like that, if you are moved from Johannesburg to Cape Town, provincially or interstate, things work differently in that area. Things work differently in that jurisdiction. You don't know the area. You don't know the place. So something is called a training day where they put you with another person that's senior to you, that knows the area. So the cop will be, uh, be with him, the officer, they will travel, he will show him the area, he'll say, okay, well, things work like this here. See that area there, this person here, that place here, do you okay there, you okay there? But that area, uh-uh, don't go there without backup. As you're driving through, they'll say, uh-uh, see that house there, uh-uh. That guy looks like they're having parties and it looks like everything's innocent, but that's where the problem area is. Don't go there alone. Stay out of this zone. This is where you need to be cautious. Watch this guy. Watch that guy. Watch that person. You see, you've got all the education, but to apply yourself in the area, you need a training day. You need in-service training. All the protocols of your education, when you studied at your tertiary level, when you were doing it in your industry, you need somebody to train you to help you. It's called your training day. It's called your in-service training. Jesus says, if you want to have an immunity and have success, then you're going to have to be now led by the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to physically lead you anymore, but you are going to be trained and protected by the Holy Spirit. There are people in authority are with you, that will train you, that will help you along. If man has a kind of system like this, so that it helps us to protect us, to guide us, and to be more productive, don't you think that God has this already covered? There are so many people that want to cut off the Holy Spirit. They don't want to speak in tongues. They don't want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't want to have expressions of the Holy Spirit because it seems improper. It doesn't seem all prim and proper. It sounds a bit funny. It's a little bit undignified. Well, that's what they said to David when he was a king. You're looking undignified. This is not how a king should behave. He says, do you want me to become more undignified? He took off his clothes. He began to dance. He began to do everything. You know why? Because he realized and he knew who his source is, who, where his victories had come from. It has not come from man, but it came from God. When you realize that, you will never be ashamed of the gospel. You will never be ashamed of speaking in tongues. You will speak with authority. You will speak with power, irrespective of what people will say. But you will stand upon God's word and be filled with the Holy Spirit because that's who your immunity is in this earth. That's who's going to train you. That's who's going to build you up so you'll be strong enough to overcome circumstances and situations. Jesus knew it. His disciples are going to be faced with all sorts of trials, circumstances, and situations. And the only person that can help train them, give them that in-service training, give them that training day, is the Holy Spirit. How can we leave our homes? How can we make decisions? without consulting the mind of the Spirit, without consulting God's Word, because that's our personal trainer. When I think about a personal trainer, I look at people at the gym. I look at people that want to lose weight, people that want to work out. They want to build muscle. They want to get fit. And you can read all the books. You can go through all the different routines that's out there. And you'll go to the gym and you'll see people, I've seen people training for years and they still look the same. I see new people come in, they make certain changes and then they plateau. And uh, you look at people that are training alongside you and you say, but how come he's looking different? How come he's looking good? She's looking better. She's good. But I'm training. I'm here five days a week. I'm here six days a week. What's happening? What's going on? Well, you have all the head knowledge. But until you get a personal trainer, they help you with your technique. They show you how things are done. They help you understand the routine. They help you understand how your body works. Then they direct you to people. They direct you to a dietitian. The dietitian will find out your blood type. Then they'll prescribe you an eating plan. But you're thinking, what, why do I have to worry about blood types? Why do I have to go on this eating plan? If I go on an eating plan, then I don't need to train anyways. But you must realize and understand when you have this personal trainer, what they're doing is they are helping you build up an immune system against obesity. They're helping you build up an immune system to help you quench the appetite in 
in your life that's bringing on all these symptoms of ill health. And until you realize that it's not only just a physical training that's going to help, but when you have a personal trainer in your ear helping you understand how this works, because they've seen many people come in and out the doors and help many people with success, and you're not going to be the first when you take heed to their processes then you will see the true difference in your life. But when you bypass those processes, you're going to have success that will be short-lived. The Holy Spirit is your personal trainer. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings about your training days in life. The Holy Spirit is the one that's going to guide you. The Holy Spirit is the one that's going to direct you. When I look at this kind of personal training, and when I look and understand about how we can build up this immunity, and I'm thinking about our training days, I want to highlight two things with you this morning. And number one, it's called the process. Everybody say the process. Come on, say it. Say it like you're in a process. Say the process. And the next thing is called the lessons. Everybody say lessons. So we're talking about when it comes to your training days with the Holy Spirit, it's about the process and it's about the lessons. You see, the process and the lessons are the things that build you up and strengthen you. Because when you bypass the process and you refuse to learn from the lessons, not only will you remain the same, but you can also regress in life because you begin to refuse to listen and take instruction. This has become a downfall for many people that are gifted and even have talents in their lives. Importantly, the enemy doesn't want you to be increased. The enemy doesn't want you to be strengthened. More importantly, it's the flesh that will also resist this process. It's natural for the flesh not to want to be trained. It's natural for the flesh to resist instruction, to resist discipline, because the flesh wants to be happy and comfortable all the time. Remember some time back I preached about being comfortable in uncomfortable places. It's important for us to realize and know that. When you look at all professional athletes around the world, people that are iconic in their industries, in sport, you name it. You look at them with their talent, and you see how far they've come. Automatically, I lost some of you. Some of you think, oh, well, they are the talented ones. They're the ones that's making the big bucks. It's not for me. It's not about me. You see, you've already cut yourself short. Because you don't have that kind of talent, you think, well, I'm going to be mediocre, I'm going to be average. I want you to know that it's not that case. Don't write yourself off. Don't cut yourself short. Because when you are born in your mother's womb, birth thereon, God says, I knew you before I even formed you. And when God forms you, He has built you with enough gifts, ministry, talents, and callings so that you will be successful and be victorious. Don't let anybody else tell you different because you serve a living God. And it is God that decides your victory. It's God that enthrones and dethrones. It's God that promotes and demotes. So you have enough inside of you. You've got the gifts. You've got the ministry. You've got the talents. And it's the Holy spirit that will help you draw it out. Don't cut yourself short. But even look at talented people. From the Muhammad Ali's, to the Tiger Woods, to the Williams sisters, uh, to the karate champions, the boxing champions, the mixed martial artists, all the great sportsmen and people of success around the world. When you look at their level of talent, automatically talented people, number one thing, they don't need the discipline. They don't need the training. But I look and track at people that even that you would know of, people that I know of, people that are talented at soccer, talented at volleyball, they're talented at the different sports that are being played, netball and the likes, but yet they can't make it in that sport. They can't make it in that industry. Why? It's because number one, they quit on the process. Number two, they're not willing to learn from the lessons that are in the process. Talent will not carry you alone. Tiger Woods with uh, one of the greatest swings in golf. Do you know he has a swing coach? <laughs> Tiger Woods, all the wins, legendary golfer, one of the greatest swings that golfers have ever seen. He has a swing coach. He has a coach, a trainer in his life. He has his father there that's mentored him. But even then he had to open up the door to other trainers, to other coaches. 
Mike Tyson, with all the strength and the knockout power that he had, he had Customado. He had to have him trained. He had to go through the process. He's talented as he was. He still had to wake up at four in the morning. He still had to go to the gym. He still had to pay the price. He still had to learn how to punch accurately. His timing, all of those things had to be trained in him. He had to have that personal trainer. He had to have that training day. Street fighting was one thing. Being in the ring is something else. You see, the, the, the difference between professional athletes and people that excel at what they do, they are able to be at that level because they are willing to follow through with the process and learn the lessons. I, was, I had a friend in high school that was an excellent runner. He was able to run it 11 seconds in high school and the potential to even go lower. He was very fast and uh, we tried to get him scholarships and things and some people signed him up and began to train him. But at the end of, a, of the day, he couldn't make it. You know why? Because he wasn't willing to listen to trainers. He wasn't willing to pay the price to go through the process. They told him not to join certain companies. They told him where he's got to be, how he needs to live, how he needs to change his diet, get things done. But he ended up in drugs and he ended up in alcohol. What happened to his talent? He could have been something, been somebody, but he quit the process and he refused to learn from the lessons. In life, the same thing happens with us. I'm reminded of that movie, uh, Karate Kid. Uh, remember with Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan and Will Smith's son. Remember he was being bullied and beaten up at school and he wanted to learn to defend himself and oh, there's this old Jackie Chan comes and wants to train him. So he says he trains him and he comes into his, uh, into his dojo there. And uh, this young kid takes his jacket off and he just drops it on the floor and he goes and starts wanting to train. Jackie Chan sends him back. He says, pick up your jacket. Then he says, hang your jacket. Then he hangs his jacket. Then he says, take your jacket off. Then he takes it off the hanger. He says, put your jacket on. Then he said, take your jacket off. Then he says, hang it on. And then he said, now clean the floors. And then he finishes it and he's waiting to train. Then he says, okay, go home. Today's training is done. This boy says, what? Training is done? Anyways, he comes back the next day. Same thing happens. Take his jacket, put it on the floor. He goes there. What does Jackie say? Pick up your jacket. Hang your jacket. Now take your jacket off. Now put it on. Now take it off. Now hang it up. And then this boy gets frustrated. He says, I didn't come to pick up and put off jackets and take it off. But I came to learn how to fight. I want to punch. I want to kick. But he didn't understand there's a process. He was not willing to stick the process. But what Jackie Chan does, he comes, he says, okay, now this is what you do. Pick up the jacket, put it on. Da, 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 da. Now Jackie Chan throws a few punches. He says, take your jacket off. He takes it off. He blocks the chance. He says, put your jacket on. He blocks another. Says, he says, hang your jacket up. He's able to block. And he says, now that you can do all that, he says, oh. I didn't know I can block. I didn't know I can block left, I can block right, in, out, by doing what? Picking up my jacket, hanging it, putting it up, putting it on. There was a process that had to be conducted. There was a process about that personal trainer, about his ways, that in order for this young man to achieve a level of martial arts, he had to stand and go through the process. When I look at personal trainers, I look at coaches, I look at all the professional people in industry, I realize you cannot just get their training without their process. All of them have their own process. Coaches have their own processes. All of them have their processes for their training. And I begin to think and realize, wow, none of these trainers are willing to take people in who want to bypass the process. So there's power in the processes, and in the process, is where you would learn. And my concern for the church right now with the pandemic that we are going through is how many people are choosing to bypass the processes because of what's going on with this pandemic, because of the lockdown situation. I said, no, we got to get things right and understand that though we have the pandemic, though we have the lockdown, there are some processes that we should never bypass. And I'm dealing with issues and problems and circumstances where I have to help and guide people. For an example, let me give you a quick one. I'm looking at people that come to me that want to get married. And I ask them, well, how long are you courting for? 
Well, they say, well, we're we courting for two years and we think we're ready to get married. I say, no, you're not counting for two years. You are now courting for a year or even under a year. They say, no, but pastor, we met certain time. We started going out. I said, yes, that's a normal courtship. And normal circumstances would be two years. But with the lockdown, without the interaction of family, people going out normally, spending time together, where's the courtship? Now people look funny. <laughs> they say, but what are you saying? You see, people will bypass the process. You see, there's time and there's interaction that is required in a courtship so that that process will bring about lessons for you to learn. Learn about your future in-laws, about your future son-in-law, future daughter-in-law, future mother-in-law, father-in-law, future sister-in-law, brother-in-law, about your partner, how they react with family, with other people, in their environment, during lockdown, all these activities are now on, on, a, on a go slow, smaller scale, the interaction with people, with families, you don't know what you're looking into, you're only dating for the year, two years, and when you look at three years, four years going on, there's so much that you could have done on a normal courtship, but in this time, because time is going on, people want to bypass certain processes that's not going to work in your favor it doesn't mean to say that because time is moving on that it is adequate when it comes to your interaction and lessons and experiences learned it becomes adequate no it doesn't there are certain processes that you should never bypass same thing is happening when it comes to parenting now we got parents that have that are born in 2019, born in 2020. We have parents for the very, very first time. What's happening with the pandemic, with the mask, with the social distancing? People are becoming more antisocial. Even before this, it's been happening with social media, with technology, with phones. Look at our children, how antisocial they are. They are always on their phones all the time, sitting in company and still on their phones, sitting at the, uh, at the supper table, and in a family that's sitting together, everybody's on their phone, everybody eating the same food from the same pot, but nobody's interacting with each other. They're all on their phones. How antisocial. Look at where the world has been going. In our home, in my home, we don't have cell phones uh, on the table. Nobody is going online. Nobody's on social media. If you're interacting with the people at the table about something, then yes, show them the picture. Yes, show them this is what you saw. Interact with the people on your phones with what's happening. But there's no updates happening. There's no socializing, chatting with other people that's not on the table. There's got to be rules. There's got to be a process that we have. I know I'm not preaching so good for that, amen, but I'm here to help you and direct you. This is what's going on. Children are training parents. Parents are not training children. You've got to understand it's an antisocial era right now. And because your children cry when they're in large crowds, when they're with people, they're not used to it because of what's happening. Don't make decisions because your children cry all the time. Because when your children cry and you give them what they want when they cry, your children are training you, meaning children are training parents. But the Bible says train your children up in the ways of the Lord. Children are, shouldn't be able to train the parents. Parents must train the children. So when children cry, train your child. When you cry, you don't get what you want. When you throw tantrums, you don't get what you want. If you want something, this is how you do it. This is how you ask. You've got to listen. You've got to hear my instructions. When you do things this way, this is how you get what you want. Not by crying, not by tantrums, because parents must train their children. Children must not train the parents. I'm getting few amens. I'm not here to, to reach amens, hallelujahs, and claps. I'm here to help and instruct you because that's what Jesus said to the disciples. He says, wait until you are filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will guide you. The decisions that we are making in life, who's guiding you? How are you making those decisions? Look at the shortcuts that people are taking right now in life. They are actually kingdom shortcuts that people are taking and the church is agreeing and following. For an example, during lockdown, people are becoming pastors. How they ordain pastors, I don't know. How they have followed the process to become pastors, I don't know. I don't understand. People are mustering up churches in their garages while churches are under lockdown. They are opening their own churches, becoming shepherds, becoming pastors, becoming prophets, becoming evangelists. Where is the process that they had to go through? Because right now there's no home visitation. Right now there's no cell meetings. There's no Thanksgiving that we have. There's no interaction with people. We're not laying hands and casting out demons, laying hands and healing people, traveling all over. Those are processes. It's not about your gift. It's not about preaching. 
many people that have gifts, but are they called to do what they need to do? And before you are called, you can never ever get engaged in something like that and get people to follow you. There is a process in carrying an anointing. There is a process in being called to open up a church. Be careful about people that are just opening up churches now, mushrooming churches and becoming pastors and having their names where they are attaching their own titles to it. Be careful about those things. It's not time to hop churches and to visit other people people right now. The church is under attack. It's time for you to stand with your pastor. It's time for you to be with your pastor. Your man of God has been with you all these years and your man of God has stood with you. Now is the time for you to stand with him. I know I'm not talking to you because you are here, but I'm talking to people who are double-minded. I'm talking to people who lack the spiritual guidance of the Holy Spirit. I will not engage with somebody who's bypassed a process because if you bypass a process, it's a shortcut and shortcuts mean that success is short-lived. Where do I get this from? What did Jesus do about the, say about the parable of the talents? To one he gave five, to the other he gave three, to the other he gave one. And he saw what each one of them did. The one with five doubled it, the one with three doubled it. What did they do? They engaged the process. But the one that had one, he hid his talent. And when Jesus approached him and he says, where's your talent? He didn't just under it. He didn't misuse it. He didn't lose it. He actually had it. But what did he say? You wicked and slothful servant. You knew what you needed to do means the process, but you bypass process. And this is what you do and it will be taken away. There are many things that you will engage in with people if you don't know them, if you haven't seen them, if they bypass the process, the success will be short lived because even what God gives them will be taken away because they bypass the process. You better stay in a church that has been through a process. You better stay with the man of God that has sustained himself, that carries an anointing. Not somebody that you don't know. Not somebody that's just gifted. The gifts, oh man, are without repentance. But you got to follow somebody who's trained people. Follow somebody who's been a war. Follow somebody who's been through battles. Follow somebody who looks at a giant and knows how to take down a giant because they took down the lion. They took down the bear. David said, oh, I can't wear this kingly armor because I'm not trained with it. I was trained with the Holy Spirit when I faced the lion. I was trained with the Holy Spirit when I faced the bear. Now, when I see this giant, because I'm trained by the Holy Spirit, I've got the Holy Ghost vaccine. The Holy Ghost has been injected in me. I've been down, but I've never been out. I've been attacked, but I've never been overcome. Who is this giant that stands before me? I'll take him down like I did it before because I'm trained by the Holy Ghost. I've had my training days. Can you stand with me this morning? I'm out of time. I got to pray with you. My concern is what is happening in your life with the processes. What processes are you faced with right now? One of our spiritual dilemmas is this lockdown. We don't know. The government is now dictating to you about your fears and your faith. Government is telling you when you can attend church and can't. If it's a decision of integrity, I'll, I'll understand. But look at the people that are not in church. The government is telling you it's safe to go to the supermarket. It's safe to go to restaurants in small numbers. It's safe to be at work, follow all the protocols. The government is telling you that you can trust a shopkeeper with your safety, but you come to church, it's dangerous. You can trust checkers, pick and pay, shop right, your local grocery store. Trust your shop owner with your safety, but you can't trust your pastor with your safety. Hmm? That's what the government is saying. And they are listening. People are going to work, people are shopping, people are standing in queues to buy their groceries. Don't know who they're standing next to, but they're afraid to come to church. That's a spirit of fear. We shouldn't have that. Now, I have no problem if the church that you go to, if you're watching this message online, if they have no regard for, pro, for COVID protocols, then don't go to the church. But when your man of God is careful about your safety, has protocols involved, you better be in church. You better be there because you know why? We can't afford to bypass this process. Ask the people that I hear, those that are watching online, and this anointing, what they feel, what they gather. This is what the enemy doesn't want. We got to stay focused. 
stay in touch, stay with God. When you train by the Holy Spirit, you'll get through your process and you will be victorious. I want to pray with you right now. Name your process, whatever it is that you're going through. Raise one hand, put your other hand on the heart as a point of contact right now. And I'm praying for your process. No matter what it is, no matter what you're going through, you that are watching right now, there is no process that can overcome you when you are filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Ghost will train you. Father, I bring every son and daughter who has their hands raised and everybody who's committed by watching this online right now. I pray, God, that no matter what their process is, it has a name. But God, it's you that will send your Holy Spirit that fills us to train us against the immunities of the negative effects of that process. Father, I break it, I cancel it. Every process that is threatening your sons and daughters' purpose and destiny, be it in their health, be it in their relationship, Father, be it with their finances. We refuse to believe the report of man. We refuse to stand upon limitation, but we stand upon your word through the Holy Spirit that will train us, teach us through the process so we will be the overcomers that you have called us to be. I thank you for miracles, signs and wonders as the burden will be lifted and the yoke will be destroyed. Touch them right now. Give them the breakthrough and through their process, Lord, I know they'll come out bigger, better, brighter, stronger because of the anointing. Touch us and bless us in Jesus' name we ask. And all God's people start together. Amen and amen. Come on, give God praise. Give Him glory. Though you go through the process, you know you're going to be refined and come out gold. We love you. God bless you. Those of you that are watching online, we're looking forward to even seeing you in our Sunday morning services. But until next time, don't forget, it's up to you. God bless you. We love you. And see you on Sunday morning next week. Amen. Standing with my hands held high The valley will never take my song Find me in the desert Holding on to you for life The desert will never take my song Oh, the desert will never take